guys, how you guys doing? Good morning, grab your coffee, whatever you have next to you. It's going to be a good one today. We're going to be talking about a very interesting case that happened out of the 60s, as well as some good stuff in the beginning of the show, as we always do. And we will be hitting the wall of shame. Don't forget to subscribe to my personal video channel over on YouTube, more independent uh, biker related uh, subjects over there. Enjoy the show. Here we go. Okay, first up, we have a very, very good story coming out uh, of Bellevue. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. It has to do with the uh, Marines Veterans Honor. Give final respects to Corporal Page. Here we go. Marines and service members from other branches of the military were up with the sun. They tell Arlar Melendez the only thing that mattered today was making sure they had the opportunity to honor and remember their fallen brother, Corporal Dagan Page. If even the strongest of veterans... Wow, there's no words to really explain the emotions that uh, it it really dwells up in anybody. Rendered somewhat speechless, preparing to watch one of their own be laid to rest. All the armed forces uh, build a brotherhood, but especially for the United States Marine Corps, it's for me. I know what he's done. I know what I know what his past four years of his life has been like. We've all. Um, cheat the same dirt. Marine veteran Shannon Plum and half a dozen members of the Bellevue American Veterans Motorcycle Club say their own experiences serving the country are what bind them to Corporal Page. We may not have been there with him side by side, but we know exactly what he went through. For these men, who were positioned bright and early to take part in the hero's funeral procession, the ride is a form of therapy. It's, it's a personal reflection time. Uh, it's uh, inner thought type. They couldn't be there physically for the corporal when he was alive, and paying their respects as he's laid to rest is the best way they can honor his sacrifice. On your side, Lauren Melendez, 6 News. Our thoughts go out to that hero right there. Uh, tch. Shannon Plum, there's really no words to explain the emotions that it wells up in anybody. All the armed forces build a brotherhood, but especially for the United States Marine Corps. I know what he's done. I know what the past four years of his life have been like, and we've all been there. Uh, we all chewed the same dirt. Shannon Plum again. Uh, Bellevue American Veterans Motorcycle Club hats off to you, and especially our heroes that die in the service of this country. Uh, now we're going to go to... Uh, Nonprofit Motorcycle Club donates the Broadway Fire Department in honor of Raven Morgan. Wife was killed in a 2019 car crash. Presented a check to local firefighters today. Back on Sunday, a nonprofit motorcycle club held a memorial ride for Raven Morgan from Broadway, and the money raised went to the Broadway Volunteer Fire Department. We settled on giving back to the Broadway Fire Department as they were there um, the night that she wrecked. And just as a thank you, way of saying thank you to the Broadway Volunteer Fire Department. Justin Morgan says it means a lot to know they are making a difference in Raven's name. They plan to have another memorial ride next year. Rock and roll right there. Uh, they raised 3000 and Justin said they just wanted to give back to the community. Rock and roll to the Stonewall Chapter of Strength and Honor Motorcycle Club. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Now, uh, Coonhen uh, Memorial Ride continues the tradition of giving... For 10th year, all participants met at the Ruby Eagles for the 10th annual Daryl Coonhan uh, Memorial Ride. Uh, that happened on September 11th. Uh, he was a Vietnam vet 
commander of the American Legion and commander of the VFW when it was still in existence. He did a lot of work with other veterans with PTSD. He brought the Travelin' Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall to rugby the year he passed away. If you guys haven't seen that Travelin' Vietnam uh, Veterans Memorial Wall, you're really missing out. It really brings home what those veterans over in Vietnam had to endure. Uh, right now, I'm going to talk about the fundraiser that we're starting now. And again, uh, on the other videos, you can... Go ahead and donate to the National Fallen Firefighters Fund. But this one we're starting up is for St. Jude's Research Hospital. And before we get into our main story, I wanted to show you this. Calvin got diagnosed June 10th of 2018. He has rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, a soft tissue cancer. But St. Jude has covered everything. And coming here, they're like, we are going to do everything we can. And when they say everything, they mean everything. St. Jude is like the gold at the end of a rainbow for a family like ours. They've really given our family hope. And we are so grateful and thankful for everything. You can donate to St. Jude's uh right here on YouTube or Facebook. All you have to do is hit the donate button and it goes straight to them. No fees, none of that stuff. Help these kids that are fighting cancer as well as their families. They don't pay a dime in medical bills. St. Jude's relies on donations from people like you. You can do one-time donations or you can sign up on their website as a monthly uh, contributor, you know, a couple bucks here and there, man, month that really helps these kids out. So make sure you guys get on over there and help this cause, man. Help it real good. Our main story today is the infamous North Bay killer, Johnny Lee Summerhelder. He has been denied parole. Uh, he was convicted of three North Bay murders during a spree of deadly violence in the 60s as the leader of the Grim Reapers Motorcycle Club. Uh, 15th time, he was originally sentenced to the death penalty, but then the Supreme Court dropped that and it was, uh, got, it was uh, done for uh, life in prison. Uh, Sonoma County District Attorney Jill Ravichitz says the victims, uh, family members, and prosecutors from her office in Marin County were in attendance at the hearing and voiced their opposition to releasing the 78-year-old. Uh, according to the prosecutors, it began in 65. He went to prison for an assault with a deadly weapon involving a brutal attack on a 17-year-old victim. When he was released from prison in 68, uh, 6, placed on parole, and on parole October 7th of 67, he was out driving in Santa Rosa about 4 a.m. He was uh, with three of his associates when he came upon Charles Kaufman and Kaufman's girlfriend parked in a vehicle in the hills behind Santa Rosa. Uh, they approached Kaufman on the driver's side of the vehicle while an uh, associate approached the girlfriend on the passenger side. Uh, they fought. He was flipped. Uh, he, uh, Summerhalder pulled out a gun, fatally shot Kaufman twice in the back of his head. Uh, the girlfriend was kidnapped and driven to a remote location where she was repeatedly uh, raped and left naked and bound by her own clothing. Uh, three months later, they uh, broke into a resident in San Rafael while they were burglarizing the rev uh, residence, the owner. 
uh, Curtis and Shirley uh, Uckley arrived. They shot and killed Curtis and tortured, killed, and raped his wife. Uh, he was arrested a few days later after a shootout with law enforcement. Uh, in 68, he was sentenced to death. He was transferred to Sonoma County where he pled guilty to first-degree murder of Kaufman for a concurrent life sentence. Uh, it was reduced to uh, life uh, with uh, the possibility of parole in 72. Now, here's one of the big stories uh, about this, and this was in 89. Uh, the headline, this was front page, Rob, Rape, Kill was their motto. Uh, again, I don't know if this is the same Grim Reapers out of Kentucky. I don't. This goes way back. Uh, it was the motto of the murderous Grim Reaper, Reapers motorcycle gang whose members rank among the most vicious killers ever produced in Son uh, Sonoma County and who whose uh, pennant for violence made them among the most feared inmates housed in California's state prison system. The Grim Reapers gang died a quick death in the late 60s when five of its members were imprisoned for a series of grisly slayings. So it looks like, according to this, in 89 is when the chapter dissolved. I don't know that for sure. Uh, then he goes on to, you know, go what we just went over. He was 41 at the time of this in 89. Uh, he was actually paroled in 86 for the two second degree murders, but was back behind bars two months later after he threatened to kill his parole officer. So he actually got out, and I guess he didn't learn. Uh, his older brother and former president of the Outlaw Bikers Gang, Johnny Lee Summerhelder. Uh, no, actually, my fault here, my fault. That was Richard Summerhelder that got paroled. My fault, correction there. Uh, his older brother uh, was Johnny Lee Summerhelder. He was 45 at the time so the links in the description box for all these articles you can go and get more in depth with the story on him the north bay killer uh now the wall of shame two california officers indicted in case of excessive force during teens arrest uh, grand jury has charged two former Stockton police officers with overpowering felony during their 17-year-old arrest in December in San Joaquin uh, County District Lawyer uh, Salazar announced after uh, former police officers Michael Stiles and Omar Villapunda you are now in the wall of shame. Stockton police chiefs investigated and stated that their actions against Devon Carter were, quote, outside the scope of both our police policies and trainings. Uh, and he was fired. <laughs> so you got two cops there indicted on a case of excessive force during teens arrest so it looks like they really haven't learned anything uh the the police officers uh you don't want to do that stuff especially now that there's cameras and all that so you you just think they'll learn because all the uh, the fun the police movements and all that but hey it's leo what do you expect? Anyway, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe this video. Go on over to my other channel. Uh, you can see our link tree uh, link as well. That'll take you to all our all of our social media platforms. Appreciate all the support. Go over to Instagram as well at official insane throttle. I'm starting to put a lot more stuff up on that. Learn that platform. Uh, appreciate all the support. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Go over to ProudHooligan.com for all your Insane Throttle official merchandise, including our new Proud Hooligan line. ProudHooligan.com has a wide assortment of gear to make you look good on your next ride. ProudHooligan.com is the go-to for every biker when they want to look good as well as to help the show out while doing it. Visit Proud hooligan.com now rock on
They run in while you run out. Support the National Fallen Firefighters Fund by donating right here on YouTube. Click the donate button now. The mission of the National Fallen Firefighters Fund is to honor and remember Americans fallen by your heroes, to provide resources and assist their families in rebuilding their lives, and work within the fire service community to reduce firefighter deaths and injuries.